Governors of the Southeast geopolitical zone have raised the alarm over the spate of kidnappings and wanton killings in the zone, calling on the federal government to come to the aid of the of come to their aid, bearing in mind that elections were around the corner. The governors agreed to set up a 24-hour joint patrol in all major highways within the Southeast, especially during the Christmas season. Recall that the governorship candidate of the All Progressive Grand Alliance, Bernard Odo, and his team were recently attacked in easy local government area in Ebony State, where he had gone to meet with his party faithful officials and supporters. Well, joining us to break this down is Moses Idika, convener, worried Nigerian citizens, and Charles Otu, who is a public affairs analyst. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Dika, I'm going to start with you. Um, of course, uh, the name of the group that you represent obviously clearly spells out what um, you know the people in your area are facing. But but let's 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 paint a picture. So it's not just Ebony State. We all know what happened in Anambra to um, a senator of the Federal Republic. He uh, escaped by the whiskers, and most of his oddlies were shot and killed. Um, uh, one would say assassin style. Um, why exactly is the situation in the southeast the way it is, and why has it grown in leaps and bounds as opposed to shrinking or being kicked out? Well, um, the southeast, yes, like other parts of Nigeria, are challenged. Nigeria currently has serious security issues, but these issues are caught. Mr. Dika, are you there? Mr. Dika, you were quickly trying to tell us about the situation in the southeast that's not being different from what's happening across the country. Yes, um, I, I can continue, right? Yes. Okay, yes, I, I was saying that Nigeria currently is under serious security threats from the west to the north to the east. However, in the southeast, the uh, agitation of IPOB and the subsequent emergence of our known government exhibited issue. However, over the last few months, the situation has uh, kind of, uh, you know, is beginning to normalize. But what you see in the Southeast now is governors of the Southeast trying to politicize the security situation. Before now, the Southeast had said they were going to form uh, an Eastern security network called the Bubago, but they assembled um, ex-military officers, police, DSS, and the rest of them, who actually met and came up with a framework on how this is going to happen, and then advised that all the five houses of assembly in the Southeast enact publicly similar law that can guide the operations of those uh, of the security network. But along the line, obviously, the security experts couldn't agree with the politicians led by the governors, who for all, for what we, reasons we don't know, have decided to bring in politics into security. And these two things cannot go together because we are going into the election now. The fact is the governors themselves, especially in Ebony State and Imo State, are the ones who are trying to take advantage of the security situation to uh, oppress the opposition. And that is what has been happening in Ebony State as we speak. Just today, the two local governments in the state announced that the Dubago Security Network is going to be doing random stop and check everywhere in the local government. And this is by extension is going to happen in, all the, in every part of the state. Where is the Nigerian police? Where is the DSS? Where is the military? Where is the civil defense? There is immigration and, of course, some other sister security agencies. So when you look at this, you find out that is politicians trying to weaponize the security situation against their opponent. And that is what is causing discomfort and chaos in the South East right now. Uh, let me go to you, Mr. Charles. Uh, a lot of people would rather 
think that the governors in the southeast who raised alarm over the insecurity in the region would be working tirelessly, uh, tirelessly, I beg your pardon, to make sure that this situation is quelled. Like I said at the beginning, um, an attempt was made on the life of a senator. There's also an attempt that was made on the life of, of another public uh, office holder in Ebony State. And this has continued to happen. Let's not forget in a hurry um, the, the, the husband of a former minister uh, in this country who was killed also assassination style. Um, why does it seem that, according to Ms. Idika, that this issue is being politicized as opposed to um, quelling it, knowing that elections are around the corner and if people do not feel safe, then elections may not necessarily happen. These people might not show up to the polls. Or could this also be a strategy? But I'm wondering, to what end? Thank you very much. Uh, what is happening in the South East has so much to do with... Um, this selfish interest, like Hidika pointed out, of uh, the governors of the region, particularly that of Ebony, and particularly about, about Ebony, because uh, the situation even in Nimo is not as worse as it is in Ebony. Uh, the, the, the issues pertaining to Ebubago security network and this creation from onset, the Southeast Governors Forum, first of all, ought to have clearly brought the state houses of assembly in the southeast together, just like it was done in the case of Amoteko. If this had happened, we should have had a level playing field where the legislators should have clearly stated the rules, the do's and the don'ts of this uh, particular group. I mean, them was fine, but from the word go, their duty were to man the forests in the entire region against Marudin Fulani invaders who were threatening the life and peace of the southern part of Nigeria. This was the original plan, but we know that the governor of Ebony State Engineer David Omai had other plans, as he had always had. The fact remains that these governors are losing grip. They are losing grip on a daily basis, particularly that of Ebony. So they, that has increased the desperation. Like you heard Mr. Dika say it, I'm not presently in Ebony, but the reports I get in Ebony is that in every local government now, the governor has said, look, for you to move, the, the government in power through a bubago has to search your vehicle. They have to search you to know, to be sure of your entry into your own local government. These are preponderances of, uh, these, these are, you know, the, the, the foundations being clearly laid for a violent elections in the state. And anybody who has known the character of the governor and his modus operandi, has every reason to be afraid. And that is why we are worried. And that's why what everybody exactly, is afraid. What exactly, so the issue of, I'm sorry, what exactly do you mean by those who know the modus operandi of the governor? What exactly do you mean by that? And what is his modus operandi? Good. What, what I mean is that the governor has not hidden the fact since two, November when he defected, hidden the fact that proof that he can force the ruling APC down the throat of Ibonians. Hmm. That is what I mean by his modus operandi. What has he done to this effect? This is a bubago. Other governors like Benue and Divu Nondo are begging for the federal government to approve arms. Omai started equipping these people from the world go by sending an, a bill to the House of Assembly. As we speak, that bill establishing a bubago. Uh, Charles, I think we lost you briefly there, but let me quickly go back to... Um... Mr. Dika, Mr. Dika, you obviously, again, as a representative of the worried Nigerian citizens, let's talk about, finally, what are the people in the Southeast doing to get their leaders to act? Because it seems like they need to be poked over and over again um, for them to come to realization that something has to be done to protect lives and property. What are you and the likes of people who represent your kind of push which is the worried Nigerian citizens and other CSOs doing to educate the average person in the Southeast to push for some form of action from the government? Yes, um, every public spirited ego man or resident of the Southeast uh, have always been saying, even when the agitation of the IPOB was what would you say was at its peak, we, we, we have always said that. For example, if you turn guns on your people, who are you going to govern? All the times have changed. This, this is 2022. 
This is no longer the time people come out and harass every other person to submission. No. Whatever you do in your corner has ripple effect even thousands of kilometers away. If Southeast becomes unstable, of course, uh, nobody will bring his money to invest. Even the cities, even those residents there, they'll be living. So eventually you are going to crash your economy, you impoverish your people, and then, of course, you suffer the brunt. Now, when you talk about security in the Southeast, you find out that there are certain peculiarities with different states. For example, in Anambra State, there's not going to be governorship election in Anambra State in 2023. There is neither going to be a, a, a governorship election in Nemo State. Only Ebony, Enugu, and Adia State are going to have governorship elections. Hmm. Aside from the senatorial and the National Assembly and State Assembly elections. Yes. Yeah. So for this reason, there are different approaches. And the main issue now, Enugu State is calm. Abia State is calm. However, Imo, and specifically Ebony State, the government in power because the South is the APC is not very popular for obvious reasons, for obvious sentiments that is even we can say is behind the upsurge of the IPUD at some point. Okay. However, the two governors, uh, um, David Omahi used to be PDP until 2020 November when he defected to the APC. With the unacceptability of his party in the state, he's doing everything possible first to show his party men at the center, so called, that he's popular at home, and he's trying to lord it over them. Now, bringing in security into this political milieu is very counterproductive. Because now you can see in a boy state today, okay. like I've said in several other uh, out, yeah, outlets, you find out that everywhere you go in the towns, there is a Bubago um, checkpoint harassing Keke or Kada riders and all what not everywhere. Okay. Whereas the essence of formation of a Bubago as initially conceived was to protect the hinterlands, and then provide credible intelligence to the police, DSS, and other federal security agencies to ensure that the then rampaging uh, headsmen, you know, didn't have a headway. Well, unfortunately, Probably, unfortunately, that is not the case right now because I know that we have a report that um, um, an Ibubagu officer was also shot and killed. Unfortunately, time is not on our side, but I want to say thank you, Moses. Uh, Moses Zidika is a convener, worried Ni Nigerian citizens, and Charles Otu is a public affairs analyst. Thank you so much, gentlemen. We will come back and uh, have this conversation again and revisit what's happening in the southeast. Yeah, thank you very much. All right. Well, that's the show tonight. Thank you all for being part of the conversation. Don't forget, you can watch a replay of the program. Just go on our YouTube, which is Plus TV Africa or Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. And, of course, click on Plus Politics and you can get uh, on any show that you have missed. And don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms. I am Mary Anacorn. Have a good evening.